Now this is a video I did not want to do. I've been procrastinating on it. I think Warren Buffett said, it's good to learn from your mistakes, but it's even better to learn from other people's mistakes. I got two big blunders I need to share with you and then some safeguards to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. So stick around for this. This is an important video. So my first, I got to confess, my big blunder is I got kicked off of Verbo, VRBO. Who is VRBO? They are part of the Expedia group now, and they have all these other collaborative companies around them. So it's a big deal. They're buying commercials on TV now, and traffic was starting to pick up. Now, the thing is, since 2014, when I started, I have maybe five bookings with Verbo, but they're getting better now. They're catching up to Airbnb on technology, and I was starting to get leads, but I wasn't prepared for them. I wasn't paying attention to Verbo because there was nothing to pay attention to. But when I started declining people because I was already booked, I did that one too many times, I make maybe three times, and Verbo, hey, they said, well, let me show you what they said. They said, uh, Mr. Williamson, da da da, your account has been permanently restricted. It's part of our accept and honor rate improvement program that we are permanently restricting you and we are not considering reversals at this time. So that's not something you want. Verbo is a great part of your safety net. Of course, you want direct bookings, but you want a big safety net with Verbo, Airbnb, and Furnish Finders, your faves. I think that's Furnish Finders, Airbnb, Verbo, faves. So you want that, and I don't have that right now. So to safeguard yourself and prevent that from happening to you, I looked up their acceptance program. It's eight tips to increase your acceptance success and it says activate instant booking. And that's what they told me when I was on the phone and I did that. I thought it would keep me out of getting kicked off but it didn't. And it makes sure that you're using your mobile app. Yep, I was doing that. And get text alerts. Yeah, I was getting text alerts. And you want to set your house rules too. Now their iCalendar link is always messing up between Airbnb and VRBO. Never has been reliable. Maybe they worked it out now, but they seem like they never communicate together. That's why I wasn't already set up by default. And you want to make sure your rates on your calendar are accurate and accept bookings. And if you're not active with it, you want to hide your listing so guests don't have a bad experience of trying to book something and later finding you're not available. So I understand that, but it still hurts. <laughs> I still wanted those leads. To get over that, I have a direct booking program. I'm going to be telling you more about that later. I'm working on an experiment where I'm working and organizing the local businesses around my rentals. So I'll tell you about that a little later. If you want to catch that, make sure you subscribe. The safeguard number two for, for Robo is to make sure you're doing your basics well. You know, you want to get back on the Airbnb. Make sure that you're, you're updating your titles and you're changing your hero shot, the first picture people see to keep things fresh. And our furnish finders, make sure you're doing your date. You got to update your calendar date to work with that algorithm. Now, my second big blunder got swept into a scam that was on furnish finders. There's people now at this part of our business, there's scammers coming in. So you need to be aware of that. And I don't want to talk about this too much because I don't want to give anyone ideas. But I need to share with you what happened to me. First, I have a virtual assistant. She's in the Philippines. Someone was copying our information, getting onto my Furnish Finders account and intercepting guests and deleting the conversation so we didn't know that was happening. And then they would use our contracts to, to book with them. Of course, they have money sent a different place and they were using our real scammy Gmail address to communicate. And once uh, people sent them money for security deposit, first month's rent, all of a sudden they decline. They say, oh, there's an emergency gas leak and then tell people to go find other place of booking and promise them a refund but that never comes. And eventually they do their due diligence and they look at my website and they find my email address and they ask, well, where's the money? And I'm like, ah, oh, this is the first I've ever heard from you. And it turns into just an awful conversation. Yes, you just don't want to be in that situation where someone's been duped and you have to correspond with them. So I talked to Furnish Finders about this and one of the solutions was to turn on their double opt-in feature. So not only do you have to request to log in, but they sent you a text message or email so that you would confirm that it's you, and then they allow you in. And then, you, of course, you want to log out each time. So log in and log out, that keeps your Furnish Finder account locked in. Now, the other problem we had was that my virtual assistant's her computer had remote access on. That was a problem because the scammer was just copying everything we do in our counter moves they had direct access to it. So here's the safeguards for that. Does it keep 
this whole scamming thing from happening to you on furnished finders because you don't want to be happy that happened is terrible is to make sure you turn off your remote access on your computer so you want to google that learn those steps and follow that make sure remote access is turned off on anyone who works with your account whether you have an assistant or your computers then be willing to do showings that's that's a new thing since all these scams happen yeah i will show people the unit and once they've seen it and they know i have control of it then we'll, we'll do the financials because this post COVID world you got to change things before when i had the game all to myself i didn't have to do that but now yeah i, I want to make people feel comfortable um, there's some other things but i can't really discuss it because i don't want any scammers to know all of our counter moves but that should get you to the point where you you're being okay now i um, hope that helps you watch don't repeat my blunders learn from them and and the reason i'm able to survive is because i'm able to build my email list of clients so watch this video next it's going to show you how to do that and, and get you up to speed so you can automatically build your email list and stay in the game even when there's blunders okay i'll see you over there